Hey guys AJ the storyteller is here. Thank you for the great support and keep supporting my channel and don't forget to like and comment on every video. Lucas and Leslie had gotten into a fight after she asked for his help on a project involving Chris. Lucas had gotten so mad that he'd started thinking about taking over Leslie's family's company, the Elite Group. Regina had just told him that it would take at least $600 million to buy 51% of the Elite Group shares. That was more money than he'd ever spent before. Lucas wasn't an impulsive person. He wouldn't spend that much money to control the Elite Group just to show Leslie up. Lucas then instructed Regina, Go and check the Elite Group's performance in the last five years. I want to know how profitable they are. If I spend more than $600 million in capital to control the elite group, how long will it take to recoup the investment? He asked. Regina quickly went to do what she needed to do, consulting the Fortune Prime analyst to check the elite group's performance for the last five years. Half an hour later, Regina came back with her analysis report to Lucas. In the last five years, the elite group's revenue had been increasing, but its net profit didn't look too good. 5 million, 2 million, negative 5 million, negative 1 million, and 150 million. The net profit of $150 million last year wasn't because they were doing better, but because they had decided to invest in a war film. The movie ended up making $5.6 billion at the box office, leaving the elite group with a profit of $160 million. This allowed their net profit to rise to $150 million. If it weren't for Leslie's good taste and business acumen, and without the profit they'd made from that movie, the elite group would have suffered losses for three consecutive years. The company's shares would have fallen in value as a result. If Lucas invested $600 million in the elite group, he'd be starting from scratch to make them more profitable. That would be too difficult. I think we should just forget about it, sir. The elite group isn't worth investing in. It's too expensive and the risk is also high, Regina suggested. Lucas understood this, but just couldn't stand Leslie's aloof attitude. If he didn't buy the elite group, she'd feel that Lucas was inferior to her. At that moment, Leslie called Lucas. Lucas picked up the phone. What's the matter? He asked. Leslie provoked him, saying, It's nothing. I just want to know what you're doing. Have you figured out how to get back at me? Don't you know that I hate it when people provoke me? Lucas said angrily. Oh, is that so? Then you are angry. I, on the other hand, am not. I don't care. I just wanted to remind you not to be too ambitious. You won't go very far unless you take things one step at a time. If you act impulsively, you can't grow. When Luxor Entertainment finally makes its mark in the entertainment industry, come and tell me again how you plan to defeat the elite group. This is so infuriating, Leslie said and then hung up. It seemed like she was really angry and just called Lucas to vent and provoke him at the same time. All right then, release the order to buy 51% of the elite group. How much will it cost? I'll do it through Fortune Prime. You can show it in the statement when you do the accounts, Lucas said to Regina. Regina was a bit hesitant. After all, it was $600 million. So she didn't dare make the decision that easily. Sir, this is outside my responsibility. I can't make the decision myself. Why don't we ask my dad? I'll try to get him on FaceTime now, Regina said. Lucas nodded. Regina immediately rang her father, Dexter Martinson, on FaceTime. Dexter didn't take very long to pick up the call. The father and daughter exchanged a few words of pleasantries. Regina explained the situation briefly and then passed the phone to Lucas. Dexter greeted Lucas, saying, How have you been, sir? Lucas nodded with a smile and replied, Not bad. What do you think about what Miss Martinson told you just now? Dexter laughed. What Regina said, you need money. I hope you don't mind, but I have to tell Mr. Peters about this. I hope you understand, he replied. After all, it was $600 million. It was only right for Dexter to consult Quentin Peters. Lucas nodded. 
Dexter immediately smiled. Okay, sir, just give me a minute while I call Mr. Peters and report to him. If he doesn't refuse, I'll approve it right away, he said. Okay, Lucas said. He hung up and waited for the news. After a while, Quentin personally called his son. Son, why do you want to control the elite group? Did that girl ask you to do it? He asked. How do you know about her? Lucas asked in surprise. You're my son, Lucas. Can I not keep an eye on you? Did you think I didn't care about you when I sent you to Seattle alone? Quentin replied with a smile. Lucas was Quentin's only son, so Quentin always paid attention to him and protected him. When Lucas wasn't in danger, he would let him be. But once he was in danger, Martin Spencer would step in immediately. Lucas replied with a smile. Like I always said, Dad, you're awesome. Can you lend me $600 million? Quentin laughed. Of course I can lend it to you, but before that, I want to know why you want to control the elite group. You have to give me a good reason, right? He answered. Reason? If I had to give you a reason, it would be that I want to take a shortcut and let Luxor Entertainment go on the market earlier, Lucas said. He was too embarrassed to say that he had to control the elite group because he and Leslie were engaged in a power play. Since his son wanted to do proper work, Quentin didn't object. Sure, I'll give you this chance. Let's see how you handle this situation. I'll tell Dexter that I'll give you the money you want. But I have to tell you right now, if you mess up, I won't give you that much money next time, he murmured. Lucas replied, Got it. Don't worry, Dad. I'm confident that I can do this project well. I definitely won't let our family lose any money. Good. Then I'll see how you behave. So tell me, how far have you gone with that woman from the elite group? Quentin asked with a smile. Flustered, Lucas quickly replied, What do you mean? I have nothing to do with her. Quentin laughed out loud. Look at you. What's there to be embarrassed about? You're not getting any younger, so you have to find someone soon. I'm not asking for much, but... I think that woman from the elite group will suit you nicely. She comes from a good family and they have a good business. They could help you. I don't like the idea of you going out with a popular celebrity. So please don't date anyone like that, he suggested. Lucas rolled his eyes helplessly and replied, Dad, you're thinking too much. Anyway, I have to go back to work now. Let's talk again soon. Bye. Lucas hung up the phone and waited for Dexter to notify Regina. Five minutes later, Dexter called Regina and authorized her to sign the loan. Regina hung up the phone and told Lucas, The funds are ready, sir. You can withdraw them any time. Lucas nodded in satisfaction. Prepare the money first. I don't need all of it right away. Also, tell our media people to release some negative news about the elite group right now to bring down their share price. After that, we'll take the opportunity to sweep the stock and reduce the cost as much as possible, he said. I didn't expect you to be so knowledgeable about the stock market, sir. You even know to control the stock price with the news, Regina said in admiration. I started learning finance when I was 15. This is common sense. If I didn't know that, I wouldn't have lived this long for nothing. All right, get to it. I'll wait for the results, Lucas chuckled and said. With that, Lucas stood up and left. Regina hurried to send him off. Don't worry, sir. I'll do as you wish. Take care, she said. Lucas walked out of Regina's office, said goodbye to his colleagues, and left. The colleagues discussed among themselves quietly. Hey, what do you think Lucas does every day? As soon as he arrived, he went to Regina's office and left as soon as he came out. He didn't stay to work at all. I heard Regina gave him the job of going out and looking for a company suitable for investment. From the looks of it, the target this time is the elite group. But the profitability of the elite group doesn't satisfy our investment requirements at all. Why did Lucas choose that company? And why did Regina approve it?
Lucas had just gotten the go signal from his father to spend more than $600 million to buy 51% of the elite group. After giving instructions to Regina, he had then left. Very quickly, Regina came out of her office and announced loudly, Listen up, everybody. We're now working on controlling the elite group. We need to put some negative news out first, control the share price a bit, and test the market reaction. Everyone was stunned when they heard this. Did Lucas brainwash Miss Martinson or something? How did he even get her to agree? With the company's best interest in mind, the staff quickly tried to talk Regina out of it. Miss Martinson, the elite group's profitability isn't good. It's not worth it for us to invest. That's right. The elite group data simply does not meet our investment requirements. This will affect our performance and even our year-end bonus. Miss Martinson, please think about it carefully. Lucas just started his career. He's inexperienced, so let's train him a bit more. Regina had anticipated that the staff would object. She gestured for everyone to quiet down and explain. Everyone, don't worry. Lucas is the one working on this project. He borrowed money from Fortune Prime to invest in the elite group. It's not counted as the company's investment, so it won't affect your year-end bonus. At this, everyone became even more puzzled. Lucas had just joined the company. How could the company loan him an investment in the elite group? Miss Martinson, why would the company do that? He's just a new employee. Isn't that a bit too much? Do you think he's handsome? He is handsome, isn't he? Regina rolled her eyes and immediately replied seriously. All right, stop that. Lucas talked to company headquarters and they approved it. Let's get back to work. You should all be more serious. It was the head of the main company himself who spoke to Lucas. So do your best. It won't end well for you if you fail. Everyone nodded their heads and quickly went back to work. On the morning of the second day, the headlines of the finance news in all the major newspapers were all about the elite group. The elite group suspected of financial fraud. Anomalies reported in the elite group's sale of buildings. The elite group buying overpriced Crown Entertainment shares. Shareholders at risk. SEC to investigate the elite group. These horrifying headlines affected the performance of the elite group in the stock market. During the trading period, the elite group shares were suppressed to the point of falling to a halt. Leslie was on her way to the office when she received a call from her secretary. She quickly checked the company's stock and related news and became extremely angry. With so much news about the elite group suddenly appearing all at the same time, someone must have orchestrated it. The first person Leslie thought of was Lucas. Leslie immediately called Lucas. Lucas, tell me the truth. Are you behind all these headlines? She asked angrily. Lucas wasn't going to lie. Yes, I am. What about it? He replied straightforwardly. Leslie was furious. You bastard! You're crazy! She shouted. No, we're just competitors after all. Isn't this normal when you're competing? Lucas said calmly. What a jerk! If you want to compete with me, do it fair and square. Don't forget, we still have to work together. If anything goes wrong with the elite group, then your investment will go down the drain as well, Leslie replied angrily. Leslie and Lucas had agreed to work together on a film about auto racing. Lucas didn't care at all. I just signed the contract. I haven't even given you the money yet. Besides, if anything happens to the elite group, especially if it makes me lose confidence in the company, that gives me sufficient reason to terminate the contract. I'm not afraid to do that, even if we go to court, he replied calmly. Leslie was on the verge of tears. She scolded Lucas. Lucas, you've disappointed me so much. I misjudged you. I thought you had a bright future, but I didn't expect you to be even worse than Chris. I hate you so much, I don't ever want to see you again, she whispered. Leslie hung up the phone and hurried to the office to think of a way to remedy the situation. Lucas immediately called Martin Spencer, telling him to instruct their media contacts 
to control the news media and websites and not give the elite group a chance to explain. After two hours, Leslie finally came up with a response to the headlines with her staff. But none of the major media outlets were willing to publish their press release. Even the SEC's disclosure website deliberately delayed their announcement. Soon, it was the end of the business day, and the elite group still hadn't made any announcements. This angered their stockholders, and everyone began to post negative comments on the elite group's official website. At around 10 in the evening, the elite group's press release was finally published. But it wasn't the announcement that Leslie had prepared. This one was incomplete. Many things were vague and not explained clearly. When Leslie saw this, she flew into a rage and immediately called the website that had published the press release. But by that time, no one was answering the phone. Depressed, Leslie called Lucas. Hey, what are you trying to do, you bastard? How much did you spend to buy that much multimedia? Are you willing to spend so much just to show me how angry you are? Leslie asked angrily. Lucas was the same as ever, as if nothing had happened, and replied calmly, It's late and I want to go to sleep. If it's not urgent, please don't call me next time, okay? Bastard! Don't you think that I won't be good to Chris right now? I'll piss you off, Leslie roared. Lucas immediately became serious and replied, I'm warning you, you can't go with Chris or else I'll make you regret it. And anyway, shouldn't you be thinking of ways to save the company right now? Wouldn't that be more useful than calling me to vent about your company's problems? Lucas aroused Leslie's fighting spirit. Sure, this is just the beginning. Don't be complacent. Since you attacked the elite group, watch out. I can do the same for Luxor Entertainment. Anything you do to us, I can do to you too, she replied. Lucas laughed and replied, sure, then let's have a contest and see whose company breaks down first. Is there anything else? If there's nothing else, I'll be hanging up. I'm going to sleep. Lucas, you've made me your enemy from now on, Leslie bellowed. With that, Leslie hung up the phone. Lucas wasn't anxious at all. As long as he controlled the elite group, he'd have plenty of time to get Leslie back. Leslie quickly asked her father to use his connections to find a few mainstream media outlets to post the elite group's press release. But the people who usually treated Harold Thomas like their brother were suddenly unwilling to see him. They weren't even willing to take his calls. Harold was puzzled. How could Lucas, this small, unknown guy, control so many news media outlets as to block the elite group altogether. It was a new day. Leslie stared at the stock exchange software, watching the shares go down again, frowning with worry. If the shares continued to fall like this, her family's wealth would rapidly decline. Personal wealth wasn't that important, but the shares that Harold pledged to the brokerage wouldn't go down. With three more stops, the pledged shares would reach the closing line. If Harold couldn't continue to pledge stocks or give the brokerage cash compensation, they would forcibly close their positions. In the meantime, Lucas had already started buying shares secretly. At the office of the elite group, Leslie had convened an emergency shareholders meeting to ask everyone to think of a solution. They couldn't just watch their company shares fall. We have to find out who's after us first, don't we? That's right. There must be a reason why someone has gone to so much trouble to do this to us. We must find out why. Yes, we have to figure out the reason first before we can think of a way to deal with it. Have you guys figured out who's behind this, Miss Thomas? Faced with the doubts of the shareholders, Leslie could only tell them the truth. It's Lucas Peters of Luxor Entertainment. We fought, so he's venting his anger on the elite group. I apologize to everyone for this. Now, we have to think of a really effective way to deal with it. Once the issue is resolved, I'll give everyone a better explanation. On hearing that, the shareholders started to speak excitedly. Since you're the one who caused the disaster, you should settle it for us. There's no reason for us to bear the losses. I agree. 
It's just love between you youngsters. Just have a good talk with him and negotiate. Don't do anything stupid. If you don't do this well, we'll remove you from the position of manager. You should be bringing in profits for the company. Besides, you can't bring the company down like that. All the shareholders were blaming Leslie, but no one could think of a way to solve the problem. Leslie couldn't stand their nonsense, but she had no choice but to listen to them and bear it. Otherwise, she might be removed as the manager. Everyone, the reason I called you here today is because I wanted to solve the problem, not because I wanted you to complain, okay? She yelled. We can't think of a solution. Think of it yourself. That's right. If you can solve the problem, you can continue to be the manager. If you can't solve the problem, then just step down. There are many capable people who can take over. If you can't solve this problem, stand aside and let someone who can solve it take over. No one could stand to hear such comments, let alone the aloof Leslie. She slammed the table and stood up, roaring. All of you, shut up! I told you, we have to think of a way out of this. But what are you doing? If you don't have any ideas, then get the hell out of my way! This angered the shareholders, and they all asked Harold how to deal with it. On one hand, the future of the company was on the line. On the other hand, it was his daughter's reputation and dignity. After hesitating for a while... He smiled and said, Let's just end the meeting for now. I'll resolve this matter as soon as possible. Don't worry, I will not let everyone's rights and interests be harmed. The shareholders left angrily, leaving only Leslie and Harold behind. Harold comforted her, saying, Leslie, don't be angry. There's no need. You don't have to worry about the company. There will always be a solution. Leslie knew that her father wasn't feeling well. So she replied with a smile, Dad, don't think too much. I'm not affected at all. You should go home and rest. I'll continue to think of a solution. Harold nodded, stood up, and left. Leslie grabbed her hair anxiously, feeling conflicted. Should she talk to Lucas again? In the meantime, things were going very smoothly on Lucas's side. The SEC stipulates that information must be disclosed in the form of a public announcement when the share capital is 5% of the total share capital. Otherwise, the SEC would punish the violation. To get around this, Lucas used the dozens of stocks that Fortune Prime had invested in. The percentage of purchases of the Elite Group shares in each account was less than 5% of the total share capital. When trading opened, there were 2 million orders, equivalent to 200 million shares on the board. Lucas got Regina to use more than 10 accounts to clear 50 million shares. After the trading ended, Lucas had more news about the Elite Group released. The Elite Group chair, Harold Thomas, suspected to have brain tumor. Harold Thomas rumored to step down as chair of the Elite Group due to illness. The Elite Group power struggle scene if Chairman Harold Thomas's brain tumor isn't cured. The elite group shareholders anxious over company's future. It was another series of terrifying headlines that frightened the company shareholders, causing them to lose sleep. It was yet another new day and the shares of the elite group were once again closed. And the sales list shot up to a shocking 5 million or 500 million shares. The total capital of the elite group was 2 billion shares, but there was a quarter of it hanging on the board waiting to be sold. One could imagine how much panic the company's shareholders were feeling. Lucas laughed happily and continued to instruct Regina. Let the person in charge hang the tickets in your hands. No matter how many tickets you hang or how many tickets you buy, in short, we must ensure that the total number of sales orders on the table doesn't change significantly. Regina quickly followed his instructions. Stock trading is based on the order in which the orders are posted. Fortune Prime Investment posted its market orders on the board and then bought the same amount of shares. What they bought were shares held by the retail investors who had placed the order first, and their shares were not sold. 
After they had completed their target for the day, they would remove their sales orders. That way, they wouldn't call attention to themselves. Just as the share prices were starting to go down, the brokerage called Harold. Hello, Mr. Thomas. I'm calling about the shares you pledged to your company. The market value has gone down from when you pledged them. So please decide as soon as possible whether you want to pledge more shares or give us cash compensation instead. Otherwise, we'll have to sell your pledged shares to guarantee our interest. Harold quickly replied politely. I'll think about it and let you know as soon as possible. Please don't sell yet. The customer service officer replied, Mr. Thomas, we're just following the rules. I hope you understand, sir. With that, he hung up. Harold didn't have any other choice but to announce to increase his position. At 10 in the evening, the Elite Group's press release came out. Since the company's shares could not reflect the company's true value, within six months, Harold and Leslie would use their funds to increase their holdings by no less than 100 million shares. When the shareholders saw this announcement, they were in high spirits. After reading the announcement, Lucas smiled and gave Regina instructions. The next morning, there was only one news item on the front page of every local media website. To increase his company's shares, the elite group chair, Harold Thomas, intentionally released negative news to suppress the share price. After that, he made a plan to increase his shares at a low price. He did this for his benefit. He did not care about the interest of their 100,000 shareholders. Lucas smiled in satisfaction as he read the comments below the news. He picked up his cell phone and called Regina. Hello, sir. What can I do for you? Regina asked respectfully. When the market opens, the price will go up. Let the traders bring down all the stock you bought yesterday down to a discount. There will be panic, forcing retail investors on their toes. Then, while the retail investors are concentrating on trading, have the traders buy the stocks held by the retail investors, Lucas replied. Regina praised him. You're amazing, sir, that's airtight, she said. Lucas laughed and replied, All right, no need to flatter me, just do it. Regina acknowledged and immediately hung up the phone to do what Lucas asked her to. Lucas had just given Regina instructions for buying the elite group stocks. The traders were to focus on buying from retail investors. Regina quickly told her employees about Lucas's instructions and told them to strictly implement the plan. In the meantime, Harold was trembling in anger as he watched the news. Leslie quickly comforted him. I'm sorry, Dad, it's all my fault. But you don't have to be so angry. The stock price will rise later on. You'll see, she said. Harold sighed and replied, I feel very bad. I might not be as optimistic as we thought. It won't be so bad. Lucas had to spend at least several hundred million to buy so many media outlets. I know his wealth, and that's all it is. He won't be able to hold on, don't worry. Leslie continued to comfort him. While they were talking, pre-market trading was going on. The company had issued an announcement just the night before, saying that the company's shares didn't reflect the company's true value, and that within six months, Harold and Leslie would use their funds to increase their holdings by no less than 100 million shares. The announcement was proving to be effective because the value of the Elite Group stock was going up. Harold let out a heavy sigh. Leslie laughed happily. Dad, I told you everything was going to be fine. You don't have to worry. The price will go back up very soon, she said. Smiling, Harold felt like a burden had been lifted from his heart. But Leslie seemed to have spoken too soon. The father and daughter had not been happy for a few minutes when the elite group's share price once again turned red and quickly dropped. What's going on here? Harold exclaimed in disbelief. Leslie was not a professional trader, so... It was hard for her to say what the situation was. Soon enough, the Elite Group share price had dropped by nine points, and it was only 9.25 in the morning. Harold got another call from the customer service officer at the stock brokerage firm. 
Hello, Mr. Thomas. Have you seen your company's shares? If today's share price closes lower again, you'll have to make up for it by pledging more shares or you can pay us in cash. Otherwise, we'll have to sell the shares, the customer service officer said. Yes, I understand, but how do you know it's going to close lower if you don't even open a position? Harold replied angrily. Mr. Thomas, I'll tell you the truth. We have news that someone is secretly sweep trading your company's shares. Whoever it is, it seems they've already swept hundreds of millions of shares. But no one has a 5% stake. Do you know what that means? It means that the other party is an experienced investor who uses many accounts to buy shares, ensuring that each account does not have a 5% stake. Do you understand? The customer service officer asked. Harold was stunned for a moment and replied guiltily, No, I don't. Please explain it in a way I'll understand. To put it plainly, someone wants to control the elite group. You should prepare yourself for this. There are only a few more seconds before the market opens. If all goes well, the share price would once again rise and fall, while the other party would continue to poke around for stock. I advise you to quickly take the money and keep the controlling interest, the customer service officer replied. Harold didn't say anything as he waited for the market to open. Just as the customer service officer said, the shares of the elite group fell rapidly on the board as soon as trading began. Just wait and see, Mr. Thomas. There will be a market order to buy from the retail investors soon, the customer service officer said. Harold still didn't say anything. But the customer service officer was absolutely right. A few seconds later, sure enough, someone secretly bought all the stocks from the retail traders. Shares rose rapidly, the bill of sale continued to be eaten, and the share price quickly rose. The retail investors thought that Harold was starting to increase his stock. So they quickly withdrew their sales orders and waited for the share price to rise before selling. But they waited too long. After a short period of green, the stock quickly went back down and was about to hit the floor again. Many of the retail investors couldn't wait any longer and hurriedly sold their stocks. The accounts of Fortune Prime frantically swept through the stocks, manipulating the rise and fall of the share prices. At that moment, more news came out. The Elite Group Update Lies and Deceit Chairman Harold Thomas used the increase of his position as an excuse and lied to the shareholders to cash out. The elite group financial fraud investigated by the SEC. Harold Thomas is waiting for the shares to be sold for 25 cents before increasing his holdings. Seeing that his company was in the news again, Harold became so angry that he collapsed before he could say anything. Leslie called an ambulance and had him taken to the hospital. Half an hour later, more news came out. The elite group chair, Harold Thomas, brought to the hospital after collapsing. The elite group chair, Harold Thomas, brain tumor confirmed. Thomas remains unconscious at the hospital, while the elite group shares are projected to continue to fall, causing its shareholders to lose all their money. Leslie looked at the news and broke down. She then called Lucas. Haven't you had enough? Do you even know when to stop? My dad just collapsed out of anger because of what you've done. He's now in the hospital. When are you going to stop? Leslie complained. Lucas sat up straight. Which hospital? He asked. Lakeview Memorial Hospital. Why? You want to come and ridicule us? Leslie asked bluntly. You idiot! Lucas yelled. Lucas scolded her and hung up the phone. He quickly called Martin. Hey, Mr. Spencer, please contact the Lakeview Memorial Hospital for me and tell them to take care of Harold Thomas, no matter what illness he has. They should get experts from all over the country and even from all over the world to treat him. If you need money, just tell me how much you need and I'll send it to you. Martin quickly replied, Okay, boss, I'll go look for him right now. How are you doing? Lucas asked. Much better. I'll go and talk to the medical director of Lakeview right now. We'll take care of Mr. Thomas. You have my word, boss, Martin said. Okay, thank you, Lucas replied. 
After hanging up the phone, Lucas blamed himself. But he wasn't going to stop sweep trading. Since things had come to this point, he had to get his hands on the elite group. To spare Harold and Leslie from more suffering, Lucas decided to finally settle everything. He called Regina and instructed her, Tell everyone that the battle with the elite group ends today. Regina immediately asked, Are you sure you don't want to wait, sir? We're almost done. In just two more days, the cost of the stock will be much lower. If you decide to end it today, the cost is going to go up because we're going to have to push the price up and down. Lucas didn't want to explain too much to Regina, so he replied, Don't ask too much. Just do as I say. Regina could only reply, Okay, got it. After hanging up the phone, she immediately went to inform the traders. Even if she used up all of their talents, she still had to finish the battle today. What? Why are you in such a hurry? In just two more days of trading, we'll be able to get 51% of the elite group. That's right. It's not a good idea to end this right now. The cost will go up by at least 200 million. Did Lucas want us to finish today? Like Lucas, Regina didn't want to explain too much. She said in a serious tone, You don't need to ask too much. You just need to do as I say. If you fail to complete the mission, there will be sanctions. No one dared to say another word. The traders quickly went back to the task at hand, joining forces to control the stocks. Lucas was watching the movement of the shares of the elite group. Five minutes later, there was a sudden change in his expression. The more than 1 million market orders that had sealed off the business had quickly been reduced by over 600,000. The remaining 400,000 orders were all taken in one go before they could be withdrawn. Following that, the elite group shares rose in a straight line and all the market orders were taken. In less than a minute, the price had gone up. From falling to rising and falling again, just this one wave had already harvested 200 million shares. Fortune Prime now had a total of 600 million shares, with a 30% stake in the company. They were already the largest shareholders in the elite group. To have full control of the elite group, however, 30% of the shares wasn't enough. They'd need another 20%, for a total of 400 million shares. Regina took a look and quickly sent a photo to Lucas, then called him on FaceTime. Lucas answered Regina's call. Why is this so little? I want to control the elite group completely. Do you understand? He shouted. Regina panicked and quickly explained. Sorry, sir. Please don't be angry. Your instruction to end things today was unexpected and caught us off guard. But don't worry, we already have 25% more than Harold. Next, we'll contact the top 10 shareholders and you can buy their shares at a premium. We'll be able to easily increase the shares to 51% and you'll be able to control the elite group. At the end of the day, Lucas was still concerned about the relationship between him and Leslie. Although they hadn't agreed to date exclusively, Leslie's first time had been with Lucas. She'd always have a special place in his heart. Harold Thomas was in the hospital at the moment. If they didn't end this dispute over the elite group, the health condition of Harold might worsen. That was why Lucas wanted to end everything that day. It didn't matter if he spent more. He was confident that he could earn back all the money he'd spent. Regina had just told Lucas that she and her staff hadn't expected the sweep trading to end so soon. So far, they'd been able to buy only 30% of the shares, but that was already more than what Harold's stake was. Regina had proposed that they contact the top 10 shareholders and buy their shares until they had a total of 51%. After hearing Regina's explanation, Lucas kept his temper in check and said, Sure. Just get it done as soon as possible. Right away, sir. I'll keep you posted, Regina replied. After hanging up, she immediately went to instruct her staff 
to contact the Elite Group's top 10 shareholders, other than Harold and Leslie. Lucas hesitated for a long time, but finally drove to the hospital. Leslie's mother was taking care of Harold inside the room. Leslie was sitting on the bench outside in a daze. Lucas approached her and stopped right in front of her. Leslie slowly raised her head. Seeing Lucas, tears began to flow from her eyes. Lucas tried to reach out to wipe Leslie's tears away, but she turned her head away from him. She then suddenly reached her arm out to him and started hitting him on his stomach, his arms, his thighs, anywhere she could reach him. Lucas didn't react or try to avoid Leslie's fist. He just watched as she hit him again and again. Leslie vented out all her anger and frustration. After that, she stopped. Lucas didn't say anything. Instead, he sat down next to her and reached out to wipe the tears from Leslie's face. This time, she didn't turn away. Leslie didn't want to disturb her father, so she and Lucas went outside to talk. What are you doing here? Have you come to laugh at us or to brag about what you've done? Leslie asked angrily. I'm just here to see how your dad is doing. Don't take it the wrong way, Lucas explained. Leslie sneered and replied, You don't have to pretend to be so good. Shouldn't you be celebrating your victory? Just a few words from me, and you declare war on us. So ruthless. Leslie covered her face with her hands and fell to her knees sobbing. Lucas squatted down beside her. What are you crying about? he asked. If it were your dad lying on his sickbed, wouldn't you cry? Leslie retorted. Lucas nodded and replied, I would, but not like this. You should contact a brain specialist and an oncologist and have them see your dad instead of crying helplessly. I mean, crying isn't going to cure your dad. Leslie raised her head and looked at Lucas. She stood up quickly and dried her tears, replying, You're right. There's no use crying. I have to go see a specialist. But where can I find one? I've checked with almost all the specialists in the state, and they all advise against surgery. They say it's best to treat the tumor conservatively. If they operate, the success rate would be less than 30%. If anything goes wrong, my father would be brain dead at best, or he could die on the operating table. Lucas was silent for a while and then replied, I'll help you. Just wait while I ask someone to contact a specialist from abroad. But ask the doctor for the medical abstract and send it to me as soon as possible. Leslie's expression turned into one of distrust and doubt. Who would you ask? My dad is much older than you and he doesn't know anyone like that. How can you find a specialist? She asked. Lucas scolded her. Do you want to know why I went against the elite group? It's because I couldn't stand your haughty, arrogant attitude. So now, just a heads up, now that we've slept together, I can control you. Now stop bullshitting me and do what I say, he yelled. With that... Lucas turned and left, leaving Leslie frozen on the spot. No one had ever scolded Leslie the way Lucas had just done. She didn't know how to react. Lucas got in his car and left the hospital. He found a place to park on the next street and called his father. Hey, Dad, do you have time to talk? He asked. Quinton Peters smiled and replied, It's rare for my son to call, so I have to find the time. What is it? Tell me. Lucas smiled and replied, Then I won't beat around the bush with you. I want you to help me contact some brain and cancer specialists from abroad. The more authority they have, the better. Spend as much money as you have to. Quinton laughed out loud. Sure, I can help, but first I have to know whether I'm helping a total stranger or a future relative, he asked. It seemed that Quinton was familiar with what was going on with the elite group, and knew that Harold was in the hospital. Lucas was amazed and gushed, Dad, you know I idolize you, right? You really are amazing. You may be in LA, but you know everything happening here in Seattle like the back of your hand. I'm just in awe of you right now. 
Quentin laughed out loud and replied, All right, son, look at us, still playing this game. I'll help you get in touch with the specialist, but you have to bring her here soon. Will that be a problem? Lucas replied somewhat awkwardly, No, I don't think so. The thing is, we don't have the kind of relationship you might be thinking. You and mom and grandpa better behave. Please don't say or do anything that would embarrass anyone. No matter what Quentin said or did, he was Lucas's father. Lucas wouldn't be able to hide anything from him, even if he tried. My son, I don't know what you're talking about. You know you're not getting any younger. It's time you started thinking seriously about marriage. I've sent people to check on the Thomas woman. Your mother met her last time and she feels pretty good about her. As long as you two are serious, your mother and I have no objections. So there's nothing to be embarrassed about. We just want to meet her, Quinton reasoned. Lucas didn't want to get into a relationship with Leslie at the moment. The most urgent thing was to find a specialist to treat Harold. He could talk to his dad about Leslie some other time. Don't push too hard, dad, or else you might jinx it. When the time is ripe, I'll tell you. I can take her back there, sure, just don't treat her as your future daughter-in-law yet. Anyway, the most important thing right now is to contact a specialist for me, okay? Lucas said. Quentin replied immediately. No problem. I'll let you know tomorrow how it goes. Thanks, Dad. I won't bother you anymore. Just pay attention to your body, please. I don't want to have to contact specialists for you, Lucas joked. You little bastard, why do you make it sound so unpleasant? Quentin laughed. I'm so glad you think it's unpleasant. Then you'll take care of yourself more. I have to go, Dad. I've got to get home, Lucas said. He said goodbye and hung up. He got out of the car to buy dinner and immediately went home. At around 10 p.m., Lucas got a call from Regina. Lucas quickly answered the phone. Miss Martinson, why are you calling so late? He inquired. Sorry, sir, but I just wanted to let you know that we've already contacted the top 10 shareholders of the elite group. We had a preliminary discussion with them about buying their shares. Based on the current stock price, we have to pay an additional 20% before they're willing to sell us the shares they own. Look, Regina quickly replied. Lucas replied, no problem, give it to them as long as you bring me up to 51% of the shares. But if we do that, we'll have to spend several hundred million more. Are you sure you want to do this, sir? The elite group isn't that profitable. Likely, we won't get a return on our investment at all, Regina said worriedly. It's just temporary. The elite group's current stock price is only slightly above 40 cents. I can increase that tenfold. No matter what, we still earn. You don't have to worry about money, it's all on me. I won't blame you guys if anything goes wrong, Lucas explained. Regina was scared out of her wits. I didn't mean it that way, sir. I just wanted to ask you to reconsider before making a decision, she quickly explained. Well, I know. Just do as I say and don't worry about it too much, Lucas said. Okay, I'll do it right away. I'll try to finish it before the market closes tomorrow, Regina assured him. After hanging up, Lucas crossed his legs in satisfaction. The elite group was already in his pocket. Lucas had instructed Regina to end the sweep trading of the elite group shares, and as a result, they weren't able to get 51% of the shares to control the company. Regina had suggested that they buy shares from the top 10 shareholders. Although it would cost much more, Lucas had agreed. Lucas woke up early and waited for Regina or her father, Dexter, to call him. Before noon, Lucas got a call from Quentin, his father. Lucas had asked for his help in contacting international specialists to examine Harold Thomas, Leslie's dad, who had been diagnosed with a brain tumor. The only thing Quentin wanted in return was for Lucas to take Leslie home to meet them. Hey son, I've already contacted the specialist. 
I've arranged for them to take the fastest flights there. When they arrive, they'll go straight to Lakeview Memorial. I've already coordinated with the hospital. You don't need to worry about a thing. It's all taken care of, Quentin assured him. Lucas was extremely excited and said, Thanks, Dad. Don't worry. I'll definitely take Leslie home to meet you. Quentin laughed happily and replied, That's good. I'll tell your mom and your grandfather not to screw up. Now, they're eager to meet her, so don't let them down. If you don't come, I'll never hear the end of it from them. Don't worry. I can't let my dad lose face. All right. I've got to go, Dad. Let's talk when I get home, Lucas said. Okay, Quentin replied. Lucas hung up and called Leslie. After being scolded by Lucas yesterday, Leslie was afraid of him. Hey, she said hesitantly. Sounds like you've calmed down. I just wanted to tell you that we've contacted the specialists and they'll be here in two days. We've arranged everything with the hospital. When the experts arrive, they'll see your dad right away. So there's no need to worry. Just clear your mind and manage your company, Lucas said. On hearing this, Leslie immediately became excited. Wait, is this a joke? Leslie asked cautiously. Of course not. Do you think I'd joke about your dad's condition? Anyway, go back to work. See how the elite group is doing, Lucas said. Leslie was instantly angered. You think I don't know what's happening to the company? Did you know that while you're fooling around, someone could be buying millions of shares right now? The elite group might not even be controlled by my father anymore. Did you know that? She shouted. Then... Blame it on your slow reactions. Anyone with a bit of business sense knows that they should increase their support as soon as possible. You and your father announced that you'd add to your holdings, but you did nothing. What was the point? Lucas replied nonchalantly. Leslie became even more unhappy and retorted, If it's that easy, why not give me the money to increase my holdings? Look, the film and television industry has undergone a major reshuffle. The company hasn't been doing very well over the past few years. My family has long since taken out our emergency funds. My dad has already pledged more than 80% of the shares. What's the use of increasing our stocks? Lucas didn't sympathize at all. They could have prevented their shares from being harvested. No doubt about that. But it was useless to say anything. He was already the elite group's major shareholder. That's enough. No matter what you say, it won't affect the way our project works. Don't even think about breaking our contract. With that, Lucas hung up. Leslie was so angry that her chest hurt. Lucas was practically kicking them while they were down. Instead of helping them during this critical time, he was robbing them. What a bastard! The more Leslie thought about it, the more upset she got. She called Lucas, but he refused to answer. Bastard! Wait until my dad is better. I'll deal with you then, Leslie muttered to herself. At five o'clock that afternoon, Regina called Lucas. Hello, sir. It's done. We have 53% of the elite group and are now the controlling shareholders, she reported. Happily, Lucas replied... Very good. Prepare the paperwork. Sell all the elite group shares you have to me. I'll use 50% of Luxor Entertainment as collateral. I'll slowly repay the $600 million. Right away, sir, Regina replied. She hung up and followed Lucas's instructions. Lucas had made it sound so formal, but it was just an agreement. As for when Lucas would return the money, that was his call. Regina and her staff prepared the papers and met with Lucas at dawn. Following the regulations, Lucas notified the elite group and then made an announcement. Leslie was so angry that her hands shook, she immediately called Lucas. Bastard! You're behind all this? I thought it was someone else sweep trading. But it turns out it's all you! She screamed. Don't be mad. Is there any difference between your controlling and my controlling? Lucas replied, smiling. Seriously? Of course there's a difference. My father was the major shareholder, and the elite group was owned by my family. 
Now, it's owned by you. How can it be the same? I really admire you, though. How did you even borrow 600 million? Leslie bellowed. Lucas laughed out loud and replied in a relaxed manner. No need to worry about that. I'm confident I can pay it off. What's more, my creditor is not even worried about me paying him back. Why worry? There was no point in beating around the bush. Tell me, what do you want? Leslie asked. Let's meet at noon at the Willow Hotel to talk. Let me remind you that your father's treatment depends on my finding specialists. And also, I'm currently the majority shareholder in the elite group, so don't do anything you shouldn't do, Lucas replied. With that, Lucas hung up the phone. Leslie threw her phone onto the table in a rage. She covered her face with her hands and leaned back on the chair in a daze. She just couldn't understand where Lucas got the courage to borrow $600 million from Fortune Prime. At exactly 12 o'clock, Leslie knocked on the door of the private dining room at the Willow Hotel. Lucas looked at his watch and couldn't help laughing. Miss Thomas, you're really punctual. If I say 12 o'clock, then you're here at 12 o'clock. Not a second earlier, he joked. Leslie replied coldly, Oh, shut up. Let's get down to business. I don't want to waste my time. Lucas immediately stopped smiling and knocked on the table a few times. Miss Thomas, may I clarify something? I'm the controlling shareholder of the elite group. As the manager of the company, is it appropriate for you to talk to me that way? He said. Leslie rolled her eyes at Lucas and replied, Well, you don't have to like it. If you don't start the meeting now, I'm leaving. After what Lucas had done, there was no way Leslie was going to be nice to him. The reason why Lucas had spent so much money to control the elite group wasn't because he was optimistic about the company, but because he wanted to control Leslie. The more arrogant she was, the more he'd deal with her. Leslie, let me remind you one last time. I'm currently the controlling shareholder in the elite group. As the manager of the company, you'd better show respect when you talk to me. Otherwise, I'll have to use my authority, he murmured. If worse comes to worst, I'll quit. I will never give in to you, Leslie snorted and shouted. Lucas pulled Leslie over and pinched her chin. He grinned mischievously. We've been intimate, haven't we? Or have you forgotten, he said. Leslie's face immediately turned red and she felt ashamed. She wanted to push Lucas away, but she was too weak. She tried a few times, but to no avail. Get your stinking hands off me, Leslie roared. Lucas smiled evilly. Do you want us to go back to the stock market? He asked. Instantly, Leslie became serious. Were you telling the truth earlier? You want to give me the shares? She asked hurriedly. Lucas nodded, then shook his head. Anxious, Leslie asked him what he meant. Would he give her the shares or not? I used Luxor Entertainment as my collateral and borrowed $600 million from Fortune Prime. That's how I took control of the elite group. I really shouldn't be giving away so much money to someone who has nothing to do with me. I mean, if we were a couple, it would be different. You know what I mean? Lucas explained. Leslie pouted her lips and glared at Lucas. For a moment, she didn't know how to reply. She was interested in Lucas, but her ideal husband had to be stronger than she was if he was to conquer her. As far as Leslie was concerned, Lucas was courageous and resourceful, but she thought he was weak and no match for her. She didn't want people to say that her man leached off her. Lucas, I'll tell you the truth. Before you attacked the elite group, I had these ideas about us. I thought that one day if things went well, we'd be in a real relationship. But now, Leslie trailed off. Lucas laughed and replied, So you've been thinking about us. That was before. Now all those thoughts are gone. There's only hatred, Leslie said coldly. I don't care about that as long as you're interested in me. How about this? Come home with me to L.A. to meet my parents. If they like you, 
I'll let you manage the company again. I'll have the same number of shares with different rights, only dividends. I won't participate in management. What do you think? Lucas said. Leslie tensed up. What do you mean? You want me to meet your parents? She asked. Lucas nodded. Leslie didn't say anything. Her eyes flickered constantly, not daring to meet Lucas's eyes. Well, do you want to do it or not? Lucas asked. Leslie snapped. What are you so anxious about? Don't rush such an important decision. Let me think about it, she said. What's there to think about? I'm using my authority as the manager of the elite group, and I'm hiring you to come home with me. Do we even need to discuss this? Lucas asked. Leslie grew even angrier. What do you mean by that? You just want me to go with you and meet your family. Is that it? She questioned. Lucas nodded and replied, Didn't you just say you hate me? Don't think too much about it. It's just business. Leslie was so angry that she raised her knee and hit Lucas's groin with it. It hurt so much that he quickly doubled over, covering the area with his hands and retreated. Seeing Lucas screaming in pain, Take that, you douchebag! Serves you right! Leslie shouted. You're insane! If you hurt me, I'll hold you responsible for the rest of your life. You won't be able to run for me even if you want to. Man, that hurts! Wait! I've got to call the police. As Lucas spoke, he took out his phone to call the police. Leslie quickly snatched the phone away and scolded him. Bastard, were you really going to call the police? Does it hurt that much? I didn't hit you that hard, she said. Lucas shot back. What? Do you think I'm faking it? I have to call the police. If anything happens to me, it's on you. Give me back my cell phone or you'll be even more guilty. Assault and then obstruction of justice. The charges are piling up now. This scared Leslie. She apologized immediately, saying, Sorry, I didn't mean to hurt you. I just wanted to kick you away. I didn't expect to hurt you so much. You're still standing there? I'm dying from the pain. Get me out of here. Take me to a hotel room. I just want to check. If it's not serious, I won't call the police, but... If it is, I have to call them, no matter what you say, Lucas cried. Leslie was so frightened that she lost her composure. She didn't even think of taking Lucas to the hospital. Instead, she did as Lucas said and took him to the nearest hotel. The moment they entered the room, Lucas grabbed Leslie's arms and pinned them behind her back. Still holding her arms, he then turned her so that they were facing each other. Leslie stared into Lucas's eyes for a few seconds, then blushed. You, what are you trying to do? Let me go or I'll kick you again, she asked softly. Smiling evilly, Lucas replied, Are you sure you want me to let go of you? Leslie's face turned red from embarrassment and she started sweating profusely. You bastard, let go, she mumbled. Ignoring her, Lucas lifted her in his arms and carried her to the bed. Leslie kept on hitting him, but Lucas wouldn't let go. In the end, she gave in. When it was over, Lucas held Leslie and they slept. About an hour later, Leslie woke up. She suddenly remembered how angry she'd been with Lucas because he'd stolen the elite group from them. She started punching and kicking Lucas. Lucas woke up and grasped Leslie's hands tightly. Are you crazy? You want to murder your boyfriend? He grumbled. You bastard! Would my boyfriend steal our family business? I'll kill you! Leslie screamed. She tried to hit Lucas again, but he held her down. Calm down. I have something to say, he said very seriously. I have nothing to say to you, son of a bitch, Leslie hissed. Lucas looked at Leslie grimly, and it was enough to make her quiet down. He continued, You've got nothing to say, but I do. As I said, if you come home to L.A. with me, I'll make you the manager of the company. I'll only wait for my share of the profits, and I won't participate in the company's management decisions. But I have one condition. You can't work with my opponent on any elite group project. That's non-negotiable. How does that sound? Think about it. 
Leslie was smart. She knew what the situation was. Lucas had invested $600 million of his money into the elite group to gain control of the company. He'd start shaking things up for sure. Otherwise, he would have not wasted $600 million. Right now, he was using his authority as a majority shareholder to get her to go to Los Angeles with him. It was as if he'd spent $600 million just to invite her to LA with him. He was so earnest that she had no reason to refuse. But her family was so conservative and proper that it would be too disgraceful for her to go anywhere with Lucas. Okay, let's do it. But we must sign a contract clearly stating all these conditions so you don't go back on your word. Also, you have to make sure the specialists treat my dad. Those two conditions are non-negotiable, she replied. Lucas nodded and replied, no problem. The specialist will be arriving as early as tomorrow. As for the contract, we can sign it now. I'll prepare two copies. It's just one sentence anyway. Leslie agreed and took out a pen and paper from her purse. She watched as Lucas made two identical agreements. The two of them immediately signed both copies and the agreement was official. Leslie was relieved when they each took a copy of the signed agreement. Lucas put his copy of the agreement on the table beside him and held Leslie, saying, Look how nice I am to you. Shouldn't you reward me a little? What reward do you want? Leslie asked. What do you think? Lucas asked with a smile. With that, Lucas rolled on top of Leslie. But at that moment, Lucas's phone rang. Who the hell could that be? Lucas complained as he got up to get his phone. Seeing the frustration on his face, Leslie burst out laughing. Serves you right, you idiot, she cried. But she wasn't angry anymore. She had a smile on her face. Her father would get the medical attention he needed, and Lucas would make her the manager of the elite group again. It was a cause for joy. Lucas picked up his phone and checked who was calling. It was Rowan Smith. Lucas and Leslie had slept together and then signed an agreement stating that she'd go home to L.A. with him, and he'd make her the manager of the elite group. Lucas's only condition was that Leslie shouldn't work with his opponent on any elite group project. Lucas's phone had then started to ring. It was Rowan Smith, the chairman of the Smith Media Corporation. Lucas signaled to Leslie not to make any noise and then answered the call. Mr. Smith... To what do I owe the honor? Rowan replied coldly, Nothing. I just wanted to tell you that you're in big trouble. Lucas laughed. If you have something to say, just say it. Don't beat around the bush. If you don't tell me, I'm hanging up right now. My time is precious and I don't want to waste it on you, he said. Rowan immediately replied, I know you paid Martin Spencer to kill the assassins I hired. I've already sent a message to the underworld in New York City. You know, the NYC community is very powerful. You killed their people, and they're not going to take that lightly. You're a dead man. Lucas laughed out loud. You do realize that you've just admitted, without my asking, that you hired people to kill me, he replied. So what if you found out I hired some people to kill you? What are you going to do to me? The New York underworld is sending its people over to kill you, damn it. But if you kneel and apologize to me and my son, I can help you beg them for mercy. It could save your life. What do you think? This is a rare opportunity. Don't miss it, Rowan replied without care. Lucas sneered and replied, What have you been smoking? Why would I be afraid of organized crime in another state? With that, Lucas hung up the phone but he wasn't going to let that go without doing anything about it. He hurriedly called his father. Quentin was overjoyed to get a call from Lucas. His son had been calling him frequently these past two days. Hello, son, what's the matter? Quentin asked happily. Lucas went straight to the point. Dad, do you have a partner in New York? I mean, a real, legit partner, he asked. Quentin acknowledged and replied, of course, our family's business is spread all over the world. 
New York is a freight transfer station, so naturally we have people taking care of the business there, too. What's wrong? Are you afraid that the underworld will come after you or something? Lucas was shocked. You already know about that? He muttered. Quentin laughed and replied, Of course. You know, I have to figure out who has it in for my son, who's playing around and who's serious. Don't worry. I'll call the New York office later and make sure they don't let anyone from the underworld over there come for you. That was reassuring, but Lucas didn't think it would be enough. He tentatively asked his father if he could let other organizations go after Rowan and his son. If you want to teach them a lesson, that won't be a problem. I can get in touch with Jake Garcia. He's the one who makes it possible for our goods to be transported safely and smoothly across the East Coast. I'll give him a call. But you know what I think of that, son. So think about it carefully, Quentin replied with certainty. Lucas knew what his father meant. Back then, when he'd gotten into the accident and broken Jessica's leg, Quentin had chased him out of the house in a fit of rage. Quentin wanted Lucas to gain more life experience because he didn't want him to become a bully or use his privilege the wrong way. Lucas's parents had also wanted him to understand an important principle. Let go and don't kill. For Lucas, however, there were some things he could endure and some things he absolutely couldn't tolerate. Rowan's son, Ryder Smith, had challenged Lucas to a fight on the day that Lucas sat in Susie's class. Lucas had known he'd be outnumbered and had asked Martin Spencer to help him out. Ryder ended up in the hospital after that. Then, Smith Media Corporation signed a contract with Level Up Games. When they found out that Lucas was an employee there, they canceled the contract. Rowan had said they'd forget everything and reinstate the contract only if Lucas kneeled before him and Ryder and apologized. Now, Rowan and his son Ryder had hired killers to target Lucas to settle the score over such a small issue. That was too much. If Lucas didn't fight back now, who knows what the Smiths would do to him in the future. Lucas just wanted to get to the root of the problem, or else there'd be endless trouble down the road. Dad, there are some things that I can let go of, but there are other things I can't. They want to kill me. If I continue to be patient with them and not do anything about it, then maybe one day they'll get their hands on me. So, I want to get through it once and for all and never have to worry about it ever again, Lucas said resolutely. Quentin listened to his son carefully. Okay, but don't forget what I said. If you have to do something important, then do it properly. If you have to play, then do it. Don't pay too much attention to Rowan and his son. You understand? He replied. Lucas quickly replied. Got it. Thanks, Dad. Quentin laughed loudly. What are you thanking me for? Didn't I work hard so we wouldn't get bullied by others? I don't care about their little fight, so don't take it seriously either. It's their fault for overestimating their abilities and being ruthless. They're the ones who brought it on themselves. All right, I have to go. I still have a video conference to attend. Now don't forget, you're bringing your girlfriend to visit us soon, he said. Lucas glanced at Leslie and said with a smile, It's a deal, Dad. Roll out the red carpet for her. Laughing happily, Quentin replied, All right, we'll prepare the red carpet. Just come visit us soon. Lucas acknowledged and hung up the phone. The smile on his face immediately disappeared. Seeing the expression on Lucas's face, Leslie asked, What's wrong? Is someone out to make trouble for you? Who is it? Is it Rowan Smith again? Didn't you already have Martin Spencer deal with those killers? What? Did he get more killers? Lucas sighed and replied, He said he contacted the New York Underworld and told them to send more people over to deal with me. I've done nothing but show him mercy, yet he still wants to kill me. Then I can't ignore that anymore or else he'll think I'm afraid of him and can't face him. Seeing the murderous look in Lucas's eyes, Leslie quickly got out of bed and hugged him. If you deal with them this way, then you've fallen into their trap.
Their lives are worthless. Yours isn't, she whispered. Lucas looked at Leslie's body and flashed a naughty smile. He held her tighter and asked, What's my life worth? Leslie suddenly became self-conscious because she was naked. She quickly tried to break free from Lucas's embrace to cover herself with the blanket. But Lucas locked his arms around her waist and wouldn't let go. Leslie knew it was useless trying to be tough with Lucas. Instead of getting angry, she looked at him coyly. Come on now, you know I have to go to the hospital to see my dad, she said. All right, kiss me and I'll let you go, Lucas nodded and said. Reluctantly, Leslie pouted and tiptoed to kiss Lucas. Satisfied, Lucas let go of her. The two of them quickly put on their clothes and left the hotel. Leslie went to the hospital to look after her dad. Lucas was bored and went to the movies. Soon, Lucas arrived at the entrance of the movie theater. Just as he was about to enter, a young woman dressed in fashionable clothes suddenly rushed over and hugged him. Lucas had no idea who she was and instinctively started to push her away. But then the woman asked him for help. I'm so sorry, but you've got to help me. The people behind me have been following me for several blocks and I'm scared. Help me shake them off, the woman said. Lucas stopped pushing her and looked behind her. There were some shifty-eyed men a few feet away, staring at them. Who are you? Why would anyone be following you? Cautious Lucas asked. The woman replied, My name is Rose Bauer, and I'm the daughter of the chairman of DigiWorld Technology Company. I suspect those goons were sent by the company's second majority shareholder, but I don't have any evidence. Dude, I'm begging you. Please help me. Lucas had heard of DigiWorld. He vowed to help Rose. While Leslie had gone back to the hospital to take care of her father, Lucas had gone to the movie theater to pass the time. He'd encountered a young woman who had pretended to know him. She'd begged him for help because she was being followed. She'd introduced herself as Rose Bauer, the daughter of the owner of DigiWorld Technology Company. Lucas was familiar with the company and had vowed to help her. Lucas smiled and hugged Rose back. Hey you, what happened? Why are you so late? He said in a friendly manner. Rose was stunned. As she stared at Lucas, he blinked at her. She understood and replied, Oh, sorry, I just went to eat. Let's go watch a movie. Lucas nodded as they walked into the cinema together. The shifty-eyed people behind her followed them in. Five minutes later, Lucas and Rose entered the theater and found their seats. The men who were following Rose also entered. Lucas pulled Rose into his embrace. Why are they following you? He whispered. Rose was surprised at the embrace and blushed. Long story. I'll explain it to you the first chance I get. Please help me. Don't let them catch me, she whispered back. Don't worry, I admire DigiWorld Technology Company. I'll help you for sure, Lucas promised. Rose felt a lot more at ease. She leaned against Lucas's chest and watched the whole movie. The two of them stood up and walked out. Are you going home, or do you want to stay at my place tonight? Lucas asked. Rose lowered her head and kept quiet. This was the first time she and Lucas met. How could she go home with him? On the other hand... If she didn't go home with him, where could she go? Those men were still following her. Lucas knew Rose's worry and said, It's okay. You don't have to come home with me. I can call some guys over and they'll get rid of the goons following you. Then I'll take you home and you should be safe. Rose immediately looked up at Lucas and asked, Can you do that? Thank you. Lucas laughed loudly and called Martin. Hello, Mr. Spencer. How are you feeling today? He asked. Not bad. What can I do for you, boss? Martin replied. I just met a friend and she's being followed. Have some of your guys come over and teach them a lesson. I'll take her to the KFC in Metro Square. Please send your guys there, Lucas said. Okay, I'll call someone right away. Be careful, boss. If you don't see any of our guys there, don't start anything, Martin cautioned. Got it, he answered. Lucas hung up 
and took Rose to the KFC. The two of them ordered some french fries and started eating. Half an hour later, Martin's men arrived. They observed outside for a while and after determining who was watching Lucas, they immediately went over and kidnapped them. Lucas smiled. The men are gone. I'll take you home now, he said to Rose. Rose was stunned. She turned her head to look and the men who'd been following her had disappeared. She immediately asked happily, you, how'd you do it? Lucas laughed and replied, it's nothing. I just have a few friends in the underworld. Let's go. I'll take you home now. I need to get home too. Smiling, Rose stood up and walked out of the restaurant with Lucas. Sorry, but I still don't know your name. I've told you my name. I'm the majority shareholder of DigiWorld, Rose said. Lucas introduced himself to her. I'm Lucas. I'm the owner of Luxor Entertainment. I admire you guys for your work and I'm very interested to learn more about your company. When you're free, let's sit down and talk. Maybe we can work together, he said. Why are you interested in my company? Rose asked. Without hesitation, Lucas replied, Technology is thriving. The country will continue to support tech companies, and your family's tech company is one of the leading tech companies, so of course I'm interested. Rose nodded, but she had a gloomy expression on her face. Lucas led Rose to his car. They both got in and he drove away. Where does your family live? Lucas asked. The Riverside Villas, number 58, Rose replied. Lucas's eyes lit up and he smiled as he replied, What a coincidence, I live in that neighborhood too. We're at number 98. Rose laughed again. Get out of here. Well, seems like I found the right person to help me. Since you live there, you must be a very powerful guy, she muttered. Lucas laughed. Looking at Rose, he noticed a strange expression on her face. Is anything wrong? He asked. Rose was silent for a while before. My father's been missing for almost a year. There's been no news of him. Before he disappeared, he'd written his will and I'm to inherit everything. Even though I'm the majority shareholder of DigiWorld now, it isn't easy she said. Lucas wanted to know more about the company, so he asked Rose about that. Rose thought for a while and started talking. DigiWorld Technology was well known in Seattle. They'd been recognized as the best private enterprise for six consecutive years. Their chairman, Drew Bauer, Rose's father, was very talented, reliable, and capable. In the 10 years that he led the company, he'd acquired more than a thousand patents for tech. Two years ago, Drew decided to research 5G communication and homemade chip technology. The process went smoothly. They had to overcome all obstacles in a row and finally made breakthroughs a year ago. That's when Drew suddenly vanished from the face of the earth. The police treated him as a missing person and didn't announce his death. But in the past year or so, the police hadn't found any leads. Every organization or company should have a leader, even for a single day. Not long after Drew disappeared, DigiWorld fell into a state of chaos, with shareholders fighting for power and ownership of the company. One group supported Rose. Another group supported the second majority shareholder, Zach Arnold. Both sides were fighting to the bitter end. Neither wanted to lose to the other. With the shareholders meeting for the third quarter coming up, Zach wanted to grab the opportunity to force Rose to relinquish her rights. He'd then take over the company. To keep Rose from gathering supporters, Zach sent people to follow her and understand her movements. That was why that scene that evening had happened. As Rose finished speaking, she burst into tears. After all, she was only in her early 20s. She wasn't used to such pressure and she felt it was too much to bear. Aside from that, she was very worried about her father. She missed him so much. She couldn't help but lose control of her emotions. Lucas comforted her. Don't cry. Your dad left you everything he owned before he went missing. That means he wanted you to live well and to be protected. 
You just can't give in and collapse, or how are you going to face your father? He said. Rose was crying as she replied, Yes, I understand all that, but I can't help it. I'm so upset. Lucas hesitated for a moment, then he stopped the car. He handed Rose some tissue to wipe her tears with. When she'd calmed down a little, he said, Tell me the truth. Will you be able to keep your shares in this shareholders meeting? Wiping her tears away, Rose shook her head and replied, I don't think I can. Many of the shareholders and the management think I'm good for nothing. I mean, I'm leading the company now, but I'm not doing a very good job. The company could collapse any time. I know that if Dad were here, he could at least take the company forward. They've been trying to force me to give up my shares more than once. For sure they're not going to let this chance slip. Lucas let out a light breath. If you find someone else who's willing to buy your shares, would you be willing to sell them? How much do you want to sell your shares for? He inquired. Rose understood what Lucas was saying. She felt very conflicted. Tech was her father's world and he'd built the company, so of course it was hard for her to let go. The reality was that she just couldn't. Seeing her hesitation, Lucas said, I think you know what I mean. Why don't you think about it? Here's my business card. When you've decided whether you want to sell it or not, contact me. Rose took Lucas's business card and nodded, saying, Sure, I will give you an answer as soon as possible. Now, if you don't mind, can you take me home? I'm a bit tired. Lucas nodded and drove to their neighborhood. Rose had just wanted to go home, but she saw some men watching her home from a distance. Rose immediately changed her mind. Let's go to your place, Lucas. Don't stop, just drive, she said to Lucas. Lucas had seen the men watching Rose's house too, so he drove past the house toward his house. Soon, the two of them arrived at Lucas's home. Rose, do you still want to go home tonight? If you do, then I won't prepare a room for you. But if not, I'll go upstairs and arrange a room for you. Don't worry, I'll sleep downstairs tonight, Lucas asked. Rose quickly replied, Thank you, Lucas. I don't think of you as a bad person, but my family is being watched, which means that Zack is prepared to do something despicable to me. I can hide here for a day or two, but can't stay here for the rest of my life. What should I do? The best thing for Rose to do at the moment was to let go of her stake in the company so that she could walk away from the battlefield that was tech. As long as she still had a stake in the company, Zack would make life difficult for her. But the tech was her father's hard work, so she wouldn't let go so easily. Since she didn't say anything, Lucas felt too embarrassed to ask her again about selling her shares. Instead, he comforted her, saying, Don't be too anxious, there's always a way out. Just take it one step at a time. Rose nodded and said, Okay, I'll think about it carefully tonight. Lucas brought Rose upstairs to the guest room. You can sleep here tonight. Let me know if there's anything else you need, he uttered. Rose smiled at Lucas and thanked him. Lucas then went downstairs to sleep. Lucas lay in bed and surfed the internet for news about DigiWorld technology. If Drew was dead, Lucas wanted to seize the opportunity to buy some shares for himself. Unlike entertainment companies, game companies, or real estate companies, the products made by tech companies were all communication devices, computer chips, life-saving devices, and other items that could change people's lives and improve the way things were done. If Lucas could buy into DigiWorld, not only would he earn a lot of money, but he'd also gain a high social status. That was something that couldn't be bought with money. Lucas was reading about DigiWorld when he fell asleep. When he woke up, it was already nine in the morning. Lucas walked out of his room and saw Rose preparing breakfast. She greeted him with a smile. You're up. Come and have some breakfast, she said. Lucas chuckled and replied, This is embarrassing. You're a guest. How can I let you cook? Rose giggled and replied, I'm staying for free. This is the least I could do. Breakfast will be ready in a few minutes. 
Let's talk while eating. Lucas nodded and got freshened up while Rose finished cooking. Then he sat at the dining table and waited. Soon, Rose brought the food over and the two of them started eating. Lucas wasn't really in the mood to eat. He was waiting for Rose to start talking. After a while, when Rose was almost done eating, she finally got down to business. Lucas, do you want to take over my shares? She asked. Lucas put down his fork and replied, I do want to buy your shares. Tell me how much. I won't bargain. Rose nodded and asked again. I don't care about the money. What I care about is what you can do. If I wanted you to kick the others out of the shareholders meeting, would you be able to do it? That was going to be difficult. Zach and the other shareholders knew that tech would continue to develop in the future, so there was no way they were going to give up their shares. If Lucas wanted to kick them out of the shareholders meeting, he'd have to buy their shares at a high price. Ultimately, he might have to spend even more money than he did to control the elite group. Lucas was hesitating. Is everything okay? Don't you think you can do it? Rose asked. Lucas laughed and replied, It's not that I don't have the confidence to do what you're asking. I'm just considering whether it's worth it or not. If I want to buy their shares, I'll have to pay a huge price. Rose's eyes narrowed. Or you can try other means. Why can't you do what you want to them? You don't have to do it legally, do you? She sneered and said. Lucas sat up straight and leaned back in his chair. He stared at Rose silently, frightening her. Why are you looking at me like that? Is there dirt on my face? She quickly asked. Look, Rose, I'm not afraid to tell you the truth. I've never considered using illegal methods to compete with my opponent, unless he touches my bottom line. And I can't stand it when the people around me just don't get it. If Zack deals with you unfairly or ruthlessly, you don't have to deal with him that way at all. It's like, if a dog bites you, are you going to catch him and bite him back? Lucas asked bluntly. Rose's face immediately turned red. She didn't dare to make a sound. Lucas's expression might not be clear enough. With his strength, no one would be willing to use despicable means to compete with him. Just a straightforward method would be enough to crush the opponent. However, with Rose's cultivation level, she still couldn't accurately understand what he meant. After a while, Rose calmed herself down and said, Okay, well, it seems you don't agree with what I was thinking. Just forget it. I'm leaving. Thank you for taking me in last night. Rose went upstairs to get her purse. She left Lucas's house immediately. Lucas didn't look at her and kept his head low as he did the dishes. Their different approaches and ways of thinking made them worlds apart. Lucas had his idea, and Rose had her idea as well. As far as Lucas was concerned, he just wanted to make a good investment and not get into conflict with anyone. There was no way he'd do anything illegal when dealing with the other shareholders. On the other hand, Rose not only wanted to retain control of Digiworld, but she also wanted to take revenge on Zack for what he'd done to her. Neither of them was wrong. It was just that their positions were different. Lucas put away the dishes, changed his clothes, and went out for a run. Lucas had been running for about 10 minutes when he got a call from Regina. Hello, sir. The transfer has been completed. All of the Elite Group stocks have been transferred to your name. You're now the number one shareholder in the Elite Group, with a share of 53%, she informed. Lucas laughed in satisfaction and cried, Yes! That's awesome! You guys did great! I'll call your dad later and ask him to give you guys a bigger year-end bonus. Regina thanked him. It's part of the job, sir. We'll always do our best to support you, she said. Appreciate it! Now, I know you're busy, so I'll hang up now. Thanks again, Lucas said. Lucas hung up and ran home. He took a shower and changed his clothes. Then, he called Leslie. Lucas had just gotten confirmation that the elite group chairs 
had been transferred to him. He had 53% of the shares. He had called Leslie. Leslie was busy dealing with the shareholders. When she saw Lucas's call, Bastard, can't talk right now, come and clean up this mess for me, she yelled. Lucas laughed and replied, Nice to hear from you too. Seriously, it's amazing how rude you are. I'm a man and I don't even swear that much. But always, when you talk to me, the first word out of your mouth is a swear word. It's not what you'd expect from someone so beautiful. The more Lucas talked, the angrier Leslie got. Why wouldn't I swear? You've made a mess of my company and now the shareholders are here questioning me, she grumbled. You're at the office, right? Sit tight and I'll come right over. I want to see who dares to make things difficult for my woman, Lucas said. With that, he hung up and left. Leslie immediately blushed when she heard Lucas say she was his woman. Although their relationship had turned into so much more than just business, it was the first time she'd heard Lucas say anything like that. It made her excited, nervous, and shy all at once. Lucas first went to the Fortune Prime office to get some documents and then headed straight to the office of the Elite Group. Before long, Lucas arrived at the Elite Group office. Hello, I'm Lucas Peters. I'm here to see Leslie Thomas, he told the receptionist. The receptionist immediately nodded with a smile and said, Please wait a moment, Mr. Peters. I'll call Miss Thomas right away. Lucas smiled and thanked her. Then he took two steps back and waited. The receptionist immediately called Leslie and reported, Miss Thomas, there's a Lucas Peters here to see you. Shall I send him through? Leslie replied angrily, Make him wait there. Tell him I won't go out to look for him, but he's not allowed to leave. All right, the receptionist said. She hung up and smiled at Lucas. Mr. Peters, sorry, but Miss Thomas said to wait here. If she doesn't come out to look for you, you can't leave, she said. Lucas knew that Leslie was making things difficult for him on purpose, so he went up to the receptionist. Call her again. Tell her that I have the stock certificates with me right now. If she doesn't come out to meet me personally, she'll regret it, he said. When the receptionist heard the words stock certificates, she immediately tensed up. She called Leslie again and told her what Lucas had said. Five minutes later, Leslie stormed out of the elevator and went up to Lucas. You bastard! Did you seriously think you were going to get the red carpet treatment from me? she shouted. Lucas pointed to the briefcase containing the stock certificates. What did you just say? I'm sure you didn't mean to be so rude to me. I'll give you another chance. Say that again, he said. Leslie was furious, but she really couldn't do anything about it. After all, Lucas was now the majority shareholder of the elite group. He had the documents to prove it. He could do whatever he wanted, including demanding special treatment. Leslie forced a smile. Mr. Peters, welcome to the elite group. Thanks for coming over and seeing us. Let me take you to the conference room now. We can discuss your shareholdings in detail there, she murmured. The receptionist looked at Lucas with a stupefied expression. She thought to herself, just who is this guy? Why did he mention stock certificates and... How could he have ordered Miss Thomas to come and meet him like he wanted? Lucas followed Leslie to the conference room. There were five minority shareholders seated around the table. Everyone, if there's nothing else to discuss, you may leave, Leslie said seriously. What do you mean nothing else? You still haven't given us an answer. What happened to the elite group? We're investors here. We have a right to know what happened to the company and why the share price fell so much. That's right. We're not leaving until you explain it to us. You have to respect our rights. Don't think you can send us home without telling us what happened. We're not idiots. Leslie was really angry, and she wanted to kick Lucas's ass. She turned to him and said, Mr. Peters, I think maybe you could answer their questions and give a better explanation. What do you think? Lucas understood what Leslie meant. He was also willing to help her solve this problem. He smiled and replied, You're right, Miss Thomas. Let me do the explaining. 
With that, he took out the documents from his briefcase and placed them on the conference table. My name is Lucas Peters. I'm an investor and I'm also a trader. The reason the shares of the elite group have fallen so much recently is that I wanted to control the company. I manipulated the price of the elite group stock. I don't think I need to explain too much to you about how the stock market works, he said to the five shareholders. Lucas's words angered the five investors. What the hell? You're the one behind all this? Do you have any idea how much money I lost? Well, I don't know anything. I only know that you caused me to lose several million and my house. So yeah, why don't you explain to us how the stock market works? I'm in bigger trouble than you are. I put all my savings into the elite group stock. I thought it would do better this year. You want to know what happened? I also had to mortgage the house. How do you think we should settle this? The shareholders all spoke in anger and frustration, blaming Lucas for their losses in the stock market. But Lucas couldn't be blamed. Manipulating the stock market was the name of the game, and he'd succeeded because he knew how to do it. He did what he wanted to do to acquire the majority of the elite group. Now he was getting tired of listening to these shareholders. He found them vulgar and irresponsible. What did they want anyway? All they did was complain. Lucas felt he had to put a stop to their whining. Listen, if you don't have the money, don't play with stocks. Didn't anyone ever tell you that playing the stock market works both ways? You can make a ton of money, but can lose too. In a booming voice, he stated, the shareholders had stopped to listen to Lucas. When he stopped talking, they started complaining and criticizing him again. Furious, Lucas slammed the table. Are you done yet? All of you get the hell out of here right now, or I'll call the guards to throw you out, he shouted. Hey, why are you so arrogant? The guards don't even know you. Let's see you call even one guard. Now, wait a minute. We're all investors here. What right do you have to tell the security guards to throw us out? Yeah, who the hell do you think you are? Who gave you the right to tell the security guards of the elite group to do anything? Leslie was secretly pleased when she saw the shareholders going against Lucas. She covered her mouth and snickered. Lucas suddenly slammed the table in anger. I'm the number one shareholder of the elite group now. That's who the hell I am. The company's employees all have to do as I say if they don't want me to fire them. Do you think the security guards will listen to me now? He roared. Impossible. If you want to be the majority shareholder of the elite group, you'll need to spend at least half a million. Do you have that much money? Forget about that. Do you think he has even 10 million? Miss Thomas, are you listening to this? Say something. Leslie replied helplessly. I've already said everything I can say. I'm afraid Mr. Peters is telling the truth. He now controls the company. Whatever he says is the law. You should do as he says. The five of them looked at Lucas in surprise. They couldn't believe how powerful this young man standing before them was. To be in control of the elite group was no mean feat. They had to get to know him. Mr. Peters, hi there, nice to meet you. Please take my card. Let's talk later. Hello, Mr. Peters, here's my card. Can we talk after this? The shareholders meeting suddenly turned into a networking session. This made Leslie unhappy. She'd wanted these shareholders to teach Lucas a lesson, but it looked like that wasn't going to happen. Lucas wasn't in the mood to deal with these people. With a grim expression on his face, he said, I'm giving everyone 10 seconds to get out of here. After that, I'm having you all thrown out. Lucas had gone to see Leslie at the elite group office, bringing with him the documents proving he had 53% ownership of the company. He'd found Leslie in a meeting with five minority shareholders. They'd been asking her what had happened to the shares. Lucas had told them what he'd done, and that he was now the majority shareholder. When they started to complain and criticize him, Lucas threatened to call security. 
The shareholders looked at each other. No one made a move. Lucas turned around toward Leslie. Call the security guards in right now and have these shareholders all thrown out. Remember, I'm the controlling shareholder now. So you have to listen to me. Otherwise, I'll have to kick you out of the elite group, he said to Leslie. Leslie rolled her eyes and glared at Lucas, but she knew he was right. He was in control of the elite group right now. As the manager of the company, she had to be obedient. But Leslie didn't want to make trouble for anyone. She turned to the shareholders. All right, everyone, it's time to leave. You don't want me to call the security guards, do you? If they remove you from the conference room, that would be so embarrassing. I'm sure you don't want that, she requested. Miss Thomas, think carefully. The five of us hold more than 15% of the company's shares. If we all sell our shares at the same time, the elite group share price will surely fall by at least 20%. And I'm guessing you can't afford that because your father took out a loan against the shares at the brokerage, and the brokerage will be forced to either sell those shares or make you pay cash to cover the devaluation. Miss Thomas, do you want that to happen? We don't want to do anything, Miss Thomas. We just want to know what the company plans to do next. Is it so wrong for us to ask that? Let's not talk too much nonsense. Just give us a straight answer, Miss Thomas. What exactly are you going to do next? We have only one demand, and that is that the share price doesn't fall any further. It must go up by at least 30% within a month. Leslie's temper was beginning to rise. These people wanted to make demands based on the fact that they had a stake in the company. How preposterous. I'm not afraid to tell you the truth. We don't have any plans to raise the share price. If you want to take action against the company, feel free to do that. We do understand your concerns, but you can't make demands like that. The combined equity that you all have is just a drop in the bucket. Besides, you don't know Mr. Peters. Look out or he'll get your 15% as well, Leslie said. Lucas looked at Leslie speechlessly as a smile appeared on his face. This woman was really bad. She made it sound like he was so hungry for power and control that he'd snatch up their shares too. But Lucas wasn't worried. With 53% of the shares in his possession, how could he be afraid of them throwing out their 15%? You can go ahead and sell your shares if you want to. If the stock price drops, even if it's five points, I'll consider it your win. You can do whatever you want. What do you think? Lucas said to the shareholders. Such arrogance. What the hell? How dare you? Lucas looked at Leslie again and growled. What are you waiting for? Lucas didn't look angry, but having dealt with Lucas for so long, Leslie understood his temper. And judging from the sound of his voice, he must be angry. If she didn't call security, there's no telling what he'd do. Leslie stood up and opened the door of the conference room. Someone get security in here, she shouted. Three minutes later, five security guards came running. Leslie immediately instructed them. Throw them all out. Make sure they don't come in again, or else, she said. The security guards quickly nodded and motioned for the shareholders to get up and leave the room. You're making a huge mistake. Just wait until the brokerage firm sells all your father's stocks. The shareholders swore and protested as they were ushered out of the conference room. Leslie went to close the door. She then turned around. Happy now? You have to keep the stock price steady now, or else the shareholders will really get rid of their stocks. The shares that my dad pledged at the brokerage firm have really lost so much value. Will the brokerage firm really sell them? She yelled at Lucas. Lucas laughed. Was all of that true? Then I should have waited for them to lower their share prices and for the pledged shares to be sold out. Because then, if I had bought from the brokerage firm at a low price, wouldn't I have even more shares? He asked. Leslie rolled her eyes and scolded Lucas. Unbelievable. Did you even stop to think that my father would be your father-in-law in the future? Is that how you treat your future father-in-law? She said. 
Whoa, that's interesting. We've never really defined our relationship. How did your dad become my future father-in-law? Are you saying you want to be my girlfriend? For real? Lucas asked with a smile. Leslie had already treated Lucas as her boyfriend. No matter how cold and aloof she was, she'd gone to bed with him a few times already. A woman would definitely be reluctant to part with their first man. But Leslie was too proud to admit it. It took Lucas to say it before she could see. Of course, she denied it. Oh, shut up. I have men courting me from here to France. You think I'd choose you? She murmured. France, huh? You don't need to brag, you know. Since you don't like me, what made you say your dad was my future father-in-law? Capital markets have always been ruthless, and you don't even know that? Lucas replied disdainfully. Leslie glared at Lucas hatefully and said nothing. Lucas didn't care about how she felt. He took out all of the documents from his briefcase and placed them in front of her. These are the documents that prove I control the elite group. Take a look, he said. Leslie angrily picked up the documents and quickly browsed through them. At that moment, Leslie's phone rang. It was the hospital. Hello, Miss Thomas. The foreign specialists who've been asked to come to consult on Mr. Thomas have just arrived. We need you to come over and meet them. Leslie immediately stood up in excitement and cried, Really? How many specialists are there? She asked. Five. Leslie became even more agitated and she hurriedly replied, Okay, I'm on my way. Be there soon. Leslie hurriedly put Lucas's documents in an envelope and locked the envelope in a cabinet. Then she quickly walked out of the conference room, pulling Lucas along with her. What are you dragging me along for? Lucas asked. Leslie walked quickly toward the elevator, saying, You have to come with me. I have to ask them in person if you invited them here. Lucas was puzzled. Wait, what? He asked. What if you lied to me? What if those specialists came, but you didn't invite them? But you still insist on saying that you invited them. Maybe you want me to feel indebted to you or something, you know? As if I owe you a favor. Maybe you want to get on my good side. Who knows? Leslie said. On hearing this, Lucas shook off Leslie's hand with all his might but she rushed at him again and clung to his arm. Oh, no, you don't. No matter what, you've got to come, Leslie said shamelessly. Lucas got angrier and angrier, but he still let himself be pulled along. Soon, the two of them arrived at the Lakeview Memorial Hospital and were taken to a meeting with the specialist. The doctor from London introduced himself first. Hello, my name is Alex Williams. Thanks for inviting me here, he said. Lucas shook hands with him, saying, Welcome, Dr. Williams. Thanks for coming. He then introduced Leslie, and she shook hands with Dr. Williams. The other four doctors were from Germany, France, Japan, and Spain. They were all neuro-oncologists. After shaking hands with Lucas and Leslie and introducing themselves, they all sat down to listen to Mr. Thomas's attending physician give them an overview of the patient's condition. Looking around at the specialists, Leslie still had some doubts. Did Lucas find them and bring them here? When Mr. Thomas's attending physician was done, Lucas smiled and said to the specialist, Let's not waste any more time. I only have one request. Please, do your best to cure my friend's father. Don't worry, Mr. Peters. We'll do our best to cure him, the specialist assured him. Smiling, Lucas nodded. Let's go see the patient now, he said. With that, Lucas turned to Leslie. Would you like to lead the way? He asked. Leslie was still a little worried. She quickly pulled him aside and whispered, Don't get me wrong. I just want to be sure. Let me ask you one last time. Are these people reliable? Lucas stopped smiling. Are you still doubting me? He asked. The specialist that Lucas had arranged to treat Harold Thomas had arrived. He was taking them to examine Harold when Leslie had asked if they were reliable. Lucas had asked Leslie if she doubted him. 
Lucas's expression was making Leslie nervous. It's not that I don't believe you. I just don't believe in these so-called specialists. What if they're just here to scam you? She explained. You think they're deceiving us? Send them away then, Lucas replied with a shrug. Leslie rolled her eyes and argued. If they're here to scam us, then it means they're imposters and don't have the skills to treat Dad. What if Dad gets worse? The hospital would point to the specialist as the culprit, and they wouldn't take responsibility. Tell me, what do we do? What do we do? Let me be in charge. These specialists aren't here to scam us, and the hospital won't wash their hands off your dad's case, or else I'll take care of them. Now there are forms for you to sign. Don't waste your time, Lucas snapped. Leslie was still worried. Then promise me that you'll be in charge to the end, she said. Lucas was annoyed with Leslie for doubting him so much. If she had trusted him, he wouldn't have spent so much money to control the elite group. Suddenly, he took a step forward, wrapping his right arm around Leslie's waist and holding her chin in his left. Look, babe, you're my girl. I'll take responsibility for you for sure. But if you doubt me or nag me again... I'll go in there and tell your father about us. I'll tell him you're pregnant, but I don't believe the baby is mine. I'll piss him off, he replied. Bastard, you wouldn't, she yelled. Leslie was so angry that her face turned red. She punched Lucas in the chest. The doctors and specialists had stopped to watch Lucas and Leslie, but now they couldn't bear to watch any longer. Miss Thomas, I think it's better if we treat your father's illness quickly. There will be more time for flirting later. That's right, it wasn't easy to get these specialists here. Don't waste it. On hearing this, Leslie blushed. She quickly pushed Lucas away and went over to sign the forms before bringing the specialist into her father's suite. Leslie told her father that the specialist would examine him, asked him to cooperate with them, and then brought her mother out of the room. Outside the room, Leslie introduced Lucas to her mother. Lucas greeted her warmly, kissing her on the cheek, before sitting in a corner to play with his cell phone. The hospital had arranged for doctors and nurses to stay close by while the specialists were there, in case they were needed. Two hours later, the specialists came out of Harold's suite. They looked exhausted. Leslie got up quickly and watched as they headed straight for Lucas. Nervous, Leslie got her mother and went to stand beside Lucas as the specialist went into a huddle with him. Lucas put the phone back in his pocket and asked, How'd it go, doctors? Lucas, after examining Mr. Thomas, we all agree that he can be operated on. Okay, what's the success rate? Lucas asked with concern. Leslie and her mother became nervous. Whether or not they could do the surgery all depended on the success rate. About 70%. Considering Mr. Thomas's condition, this success rate is very high. If he wasn't operated on, he could live for at most two more years. If you want the surgery, we have to do it as soon as possible. If we drag it out any longer, the surgery will no longer be possible, Dr. Williams replied. Lucas looked at Leslie. Did you hear that? Talk to your dad about it so he can decide, he said. Leslie nodded and took her mother back to the room to discuss with her father. Lucas continued to chat with the specialist. If he agrees to the surgery, can it be done here? He asked. No, we have to go to the UK or Spain. We have state-of-the-art medical equipment that can increase the success rate of surgery, Dr. Williams replied. Lucas nodded, took out his phone, and called his dad. Hey, Dad, there's something else I need to trouble you about. If Mr. Thomas agrees to the surgery, it has to be done in Spain or the UK. I'll need your help to arrange the transportation for him and the specialist. Is that okay? Lucas whispered. Quinton Peters laughed and replied, Of course, you can call me when you're sure. Lucas thanked his father and hung up. Everyone was waiting. After ten minutes, Leslie walked out of Harold's suite and called the specialist in. Lucas got up and brought the specialist into the room. Harold got straight to the point. Tell me honestly, doctors, what would happen if things didn't go well and the surgery fell into the 30%, he inquired. 
Dr. Williams replied very honestly, I'd rather not say, but if the operation is successful, you can continue to live a healthy life like everyone else. This will all depend on how you choose. Do you want to have a 70% chance to win, or do you want to finish the last year or so well? Harold was very scared. Even if the success rate was 99%, there was still that 1% chance of failure. This was an operation of the brain, and if it failed, the consequences would be unthinkable. Seeing the Thomas family members so conflicted, Lucas said, Mr. Thomas, I don't think there's anything to be conflicted about. After doing business for so long, how many times have you done a project that helped you make money without losing anything? You don't dare to say you won't lose money at all, do you? But you must have made more money than you lost, right? Just think of this as a project investment with a 70% chance of making a fortune. Why not? Harold had been listening to Lucas before realizing who he was. I'm sorry, why are you here? He said. I arranged for these specialists to be here, so of course I have to be here, Lucas replied honestly. Harold suddenly sat up straight. What's going on? Why would he want to get these specialists here? He asked Leslie. Leslie didn't dare to reply. Lucas wasn't afraid. I have control of the elite group, and you are all my employees now. As the boss, of course, I have to take good care of the staff. When you're better, I'll return the management to you. If you don't get better, let's see. If Leslie doesn't step up, I'm going to have to manage the elite group myself, he replied. Harold became agitated. You? How could you possibly have that much money to control the elite group? He shouted. I borrowed $600 million from Fortune Prime using my company's collateral. It was enough for me to control the elite group, Lucas replied truthfully. Are you crazy? Never mind you, but is Fortune Prime crazy? Your company isn't even worth $100 million, and they lent you $600 million? You spent so much money to control the elite group. What are you planning to do? Harold asked in confusion. Lucas went forward and embraced Leslie. Does this answer your question? He asked. Leslie was embarrassed. Pushing Lucas away, she said, What are you doing? You're crazy. She was very happy. By her flushed face, it was plain to see that they were in a relationship. Knowing his daughter, Harold could tell from her reaction that the relationship between her and Lucas had already grown deep. But he didn't understand how, with her taste and her high standards, Leslie had fallen for Lucas. Leslie, tell me honestly, are you in love with him? He asked. Before Leslie could say anything, Lucas answered. Not only that, maybe you'll be a grandfather soon. At that, the entire room fell silent. Leslie was so embarrassed that she wished the ground would open up and swallow her. She immediately covered Lucas's mouth. Are you insane? That's nonsense. She scolded him in a low voice. Harold clutched his chest as his breathing quickened. Dad, what's wrong? Doctor, come and see. Lucas, what the hell are you trying to do? My dad's in this state, yet you dare to provoke him? What's the meaning of this? Leslie roared. Lucas replied calmly, Nothing. I just wanted to tell Mr. Thomas that he might soon be a grandfather. If he's not properly treated, he won't be able to enjoy the happiness that grandkids bring. Harold was stunned as if Lucas's words made sense. If he wasn't treated properly... How could he enjoy being a grandfather? He was silent for a moment. Stop that. Just return the shares to us or you'll have to leave, he murmured. Lucas pretended to be offended. Hey, you're going too far, Mr. Thomas. Watch it or I'll dump your daughter now. Her belly will start to show soon, but I don't believe it's my kid. Then she'll have to become a single mother. If you want to disgrace your daughter, then go ahead and confront me. He replied, You bastard, what are you talking about? Leslie shouted. Lucas glared fiercely at Leslie. Shut up, I'm in the middle of negotiating with my future father-in-law. Why are you interrupting? 
Mr. Thomas, just give me a straight answer. Are you going to listen to me or do you want me to dump your daughter in her current condition? He said. Earlier, Harold was quite angry. But after Lucas's threat, his anger faded. Still, he felt that Lucas didn't deserve Leslie. You bastard, stop threatening me. Do you think in your present condition that you're worthy of Leslie? Harold asked. Lucas laughed and replied, You think she's too good for me? I already control the elite group and can throw you all out with one word. Without the elite group, who do you think you are? Why don't I deserve her? If it wasn't for the fact that Leslie looked down on me, I wouldn't have paid such a huge price to control the elite group. Harold was so annoyed. Right now, one sentence from Lucas could decide whether or not they could stay in the elite group. If the Thomas family was kicked out of the elite group board, what would the Thomas family be? Harold decided right then and there to control Lucas firmly so that his family could continue to control the elite group. Okay, I'll listen to you. But when you and Leslie get married, you'll have to give her at least 30% of the elite group, he said. Are you talking about a wedding or are you selling your daughter? It's like asking me to give her a wedding gift worth $300 million. But if you say you're selling your daughter, you're asking me to give you all my shares as payment. Which one is it? Lucas laughed and replied. Harold didn't dare say anything again. At this moment, Leslie's mother, Andrea Thomas, spoke up. Oh, leave them alone, Harold. Children should be free to fall in love. Why do you care so much anyway? You should just focus on getting better. Leslie has never caused trouble for us since she was a young girl. So why are you worrying so much? It's completely unnecessary. Andrea was hinting to Harold not to worry. With Leslie's personality and brains, she'd control Lucas completely. Their family would still own the elite group. Harold instantly understood what his wife meant. She's my daughter, shouldn't I fight for her? She doesn't have any siblings, so what happens when the two of us die? What will happen if she gets bullied by Lucas and she doesn't have any guarantees in her hands? He replied. Leslie thought her father was worried about her future and was moved to tears. Don't worry, I'll sign an agreement stating that in the future... Leslie will manage the elite group and I'll be happy with my shares. The condition is that you have to quickly get treated for your illness. Otherwise, all Leslie will do is worry about you. It will keep us from taking our relationship to the next level, Lucas immediately replied. Excited, Harold immediately replied, Don't lie to me. A man should keep his word. Lucas went up to Harold and helped him lie down, promising him, I always keep my word, and I never go back on my promises. Now, you have to make a promise too, that you'll get better. Leslie and I are so busy, so we'll need you to take care of your grandson. But if your body isn't strong, how can you take care of the baby? If you can't take care of your grandson, he'll be missing out, he whispered. Hey, don't bullshit me. I'll fight you to the death, Harold roared. You want to fight me with your life on the line? Take care of yourself first. Doctor, please authorize the transfer and I'll arrange for a medical plane to take him and the specialist to Spain, Lucas replied. With that, Lucas walked out and called his father. The doctor immediately signed the agreement for Harold to be transferred to the hospital in Spain. Two hours later, the medical plane was at the airport. The hospital brought Harold over, then he, Andrea, and the five specialists boarded the plane and left. Watching the plane disappear into the sky, Leslie turned around and buried her face in Lucas's chest, sobbing. Lucas held her close and rubbed her back to comfort her. Don't worry, I've already arranged everything. Your dad will be operated on soon. He'll receive the best care over there, he said. Thank you, thank you, Leslie said in between sobs. You want to thank me? Lucas asked with a mischievous smile. Leslie nodded, wiping her tears. She answered yes. Lucas reached out his hand and wiped away her tears, saying, Anyone can say thank you, but I prefer action. 
Leslie could guess what Lucas was trying to say. She bit her lip and whispered, How do you want me to thank you? Smiling, Lucas pointed to a motel across the airport and said, See that? It's a new motel and I wonder what kind of beds they have. Let's go in and try it out. No, why don't you come back to the office with me right now instead? We need to sign the agreement as soon as possible and you have to return the authority to manage the company to me, Leslie said. With that, she pulled Lucas towards the parking lot. But Lucas pulled her back and held her in his arms. I've helped you so much with your dad and all, and even gave you back the management rights to the company. Aren't you going to give me anything in return? He asked. While Leslie hesitated, Lucas suddenly picked her up and carried her to the motel across the street. She struggled at first, but just buried her face in Lucas's arms. At around six o'clock in the evening, the two of them came out of the motel with smiles on their faces. Now, can you come back to the office with me to sign the contract? Leslie asked. Lucas nodded and replied, No problem, let's go. The two of them returned to the elite group office. Leslie drafted an agreement and let Lucas review it before she printed out two copies. The two of them signed the agreement and it officially took effect. I have faith in you and I also have feelings for you so I didn't hesitate to return the authority to manage the company to you, but you have to respect me. The contract with Crown Entertainment has to be cancelled, or I'll be very sad, Lucas said. Leslie replied awkwardly, But my dad has promised Michael Young, and they've signed the agreement. I'm only missing the final contract. If I go back on my word at this time, it would be too embarrassing for my dad. Lucas took Leslie to her car. Don't forget, working with Crown Entertainment is unacceptable to me, he said. With that, he got into his car and drove away. Leslie sat in her car in a daze. Her mind was in a mess. It was obvious that Lucas was serious. There was no way he'd accept the idea of working with Crown Entertainment. Leslie had to choose between her father and her boyfriend.